Hey guys, here are my predictions for AQA Biology Paper 1. Now, I am not an examiner. I do not have any connection with any of the examples, so I do not know 100% what is going to be in your exams. I'm just a teacher that's done a lot of research, a lot of reading, done a lot of thinking, and this is what I think think is going to come up but please don't just revise the stuff in here I say in here revise absolutely everything I have done loads of stuff to help you revise absolutely everything so there's the whole topic video which you can go and watch after this you can watch that in combination with the um the free revision guide which you can download from my website which has a checklist in so you can tick off things as you go along I've also done loads and loads of quick fire questions for you so you can test yourself see how well you know things you can download this from my website or because it is massive you can get amazon to print it off for you to go with this video to go with all of these videos over my website not only you can get the revision guide flashcards you can get my predicted papers papers based on what i think is going to come up in the exams i've written them together so after you watch this video you can go and get the predicted papers and test yourself on how much you know go and watch the whole topic video do fill in the um checklist the revision guide do the quick five questions do the seven eight nine questions and see how well you are doing i've done this for every single exam so we know that 15 percent of your gcse is going to be practical so the required practicals that you've done in class are really really important I've done as many of them as I can made you videos of them because not only do you need to know how to do the practical you need to know alternatives to the practical health and safety things to do with the practical you need to know alternatives you need to know graph interpretation errors and things that might go wrong so practicals are so so important with this we know that 10% is going to be maths now maths in biology isn't quite as obvious or straightforward as it is in chemistry and physics so we can expect it to be something a bit weird something out there something that we don't really know um, exactly what it's going to be so it could be something slightly um, unusual but do not let that throw you do not let the fact there's some maths in there combined with some biology in there and you're not exactly sure what is going on. We have to expect the unexpected because any part of the math specification can be applied to any part of the science specification. Now there are a few things that come up over and over and over and over again in exams, either every other year or two out of three years. Pretty much every single year they ask you to label a cell. It's not the same cell every single year, plant cell, bacterial cell, animal cell, but nearly every single year they ask you to label cells so it's really important you can do that well. Then things like osmosis, diffusion, active transport, these are really really common questions. So remembering the difference between them, how they work, that is really important. Enzymes are a massive topic and learning like perfect answers for how to unlock a key mechanism will be a really really good use of your time. The circulatory system is a massive topic, so something is more than likely going to come up on that. Whether it's the, the types of blood cells, whether it's blood vessels, whether it's how the heart itself actually works. This is such a fascinating, fascinating topic. It could have to do with the, the biology within the body, it could have to do with health or society or ethical implications of things. And then plants is a large topic as well. So again, going back to being able to label a cell, making sure you know how to label a plant cell, what were the different cells inside a plant are responsible for. So photosynthesis, knowing your photosynthesis really well, the limiting facts in photosynthesis, being able to sketch and recognize the graphs, and then linking that through to the different types of respiration. What does different types of respiration, what are the um, factors and equations involved in this. For these you need to know the word equations and the symbol equations. There are a few new things that will come up so I think these might feature really really heavily in the exam. There is much more of an emphasis on health, ethics and society in this year's specification. So these can be something that can basically become into any part of the, the, the content knowledge they can apply um, a society question or an ethics question or an implication question to this. This is something that we've seen happening much, much more. They've also mentioned specific, a large number of specific pathogens within the specification. So it's likely they're gonna ask something about those. And then they've expanded upon um, specifics about drugs, about vaccinations, 
and about antibiotics. So this could be another area where they have a big question. So good luck guys. Um, I'm going to do a little bit extra for the separate science people but for everyone else what I'd like you to go and do now. Go and get the predictive paper from my website. Go and watch the whole topic video. Make sure you can go through and make notes from that. Use that in combination with a checklist so that you can check off stuff when you've done it. And don't just do it once. Do it a couple of times. Hopefully this isn't the morning of the exam you're watching this. Hopefully we've got like a month or a week left to go. Um, but if you this is the morning, good luck. Um, try to get as many of the quick fire questions or seven, eight, nine questions in as you can. Right, separate science people. There isn't a lot extra in paper one that is just for separate science, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it means that the stuff that is general to everybody, they're going to make the questions a lot harder. But because there are only a few topics that are just for separate science, they might focus on these ones. So it's expanding on things like the antibodies, the monoclonal antibodies, um, the bacteria, the practicals to go with the bacteria and the antibiotics, and then something about plant diseases. Um, so there's not, there's not a lot extra. That's it. Good luck, guys. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too grim.